you know, C.S. Lewis talks about the horror of the same old thing, and then he goes on in his screw tape letter as to have the senior devil instructing the junior devil. He says the work on their horror of the same old thing, because the horror of the same old thing is the greatest passion we have put into the human heart. What he means by that is when people get accustomed to hearing about something, and I have been there, done that, heard it before, there's a, there's a resistance towards it. And I think that's what's happened with the gospel. Uh, so much of it went into the popular media. It was made into a come here, solve all your problems. It was thrown in along with the self-help worldview and so on. And it became, I think, cheapened and somehow diluted, if not polluted. And so an average person who if you ask them, what do you think the gospel is? Oh, they'll say, you know, it's the same old thing. You're a sinner. You're heading to hell. You know, you need help and God will help you. This is the image an average young people would give to you. That's the way they think about it. But the fact of the matter is the gospel, talking about it literally means the good news. It was a good news of God. And what is the good news? Every young person knows life is actually completely empty. No matter what you do, no matter how you pursue it, no matter which direction you go, you come away empty-handed. Uh, just recently, I was watching a documentary on the life of Kurt Cobain, who committed suicide at the age of 27. He'd been there, done that, done everything, and his last album he wanted to call, I Want to Die. That's precisely what the gospel addresses. It addresses the fact that the human heart in its own pursuit will end up empty and lonely and destitute and that destitute situation comes from being in a situation where in this body and in your mind, life does not ultimately bring you satisfaction. Why? Because it is violating the very purpose for which God has created you. He's created you, you and me for the, for the relationship with himself and for the sacred. We don't like the word sin, but we'll use words like evil and wicked and conniving and scheming and bad. And what it really means in gospel terms is that we're alienated. We're alienated from God. We're separated. It's the same way we see it in the world. There's an alienation. There's a separation. There's an isolation. And when you're separated from God, the good news of the gospel is that in your own effort and by your own good works, you cannot rebuild that bridge. It is God who has reached out to you and to me in the provision of his son, Jesus Christ, who is able to offer forgiveness to you and me and help us to rebuild a life in that sacred relationship with him. That's the good news. We are lost in and of ourselves. God makes the move to bring us back to himself in the relationship that begins with God. It moves out then horizontally and changes the very lens and the worldview from which you view reality. What is reality? You have to answer four questions. Origin, meaning, morality, and destiny. Where do I come from? What gives life meaning? How do I differentiate between good and bad? And what is my eternal destiny? The gospel addresses all these in the correspondence to truth and a coherence of life, and that is provided by the offer of Jesus Christ in your salvation and mine. That is the good news of the gospel. You will not be desolate. You will not be destitute. You are not alone in this world. Christ offers you a relationship with himself. If you look at any other worldview, you will not see these terms. You will not see this offer. So it's good news that you are not alone. God offers you his presence in your life.